It doesn't matter what year you are. I'm head of the associates. If I give you an assignment, you do it. Hey, everybody. This is your daily dose of all things royal. Welcome back, my gorgeous, good-looking friends. Exactly one year ago, the Harkles had purchased another award with the NAACP and turned an award for $100,000 around into the first ever Digital Justice Award then presented to Safia Noble, who at the time had been doing work for the Harkles by being a super spreader of misinformation online. Not only did she write an article that supported a report by Bot Sentinel to contain false information as well as inaccurate information, she also was featured on the Harkles mockumentary that came out in December of 2022, pushing the same garbage. The NAACP made such a big deal about this award and gave Meghan and Harry the Honor President's Award that you would think we would see a repeat performance this year by Meghan, the Duchess of Sussex, who is a woman of color, present this year's Digital Justice Award to some other grifter. Well, it looks like this award was sort of half-assed and swept to the wayside because up pops Harry in a Zoom call. Megan, nowhere to be found, even though this is about supporting people who are of color because it is the NAACP. She is nowhere to be found. And on top of it, this presentation, who knows if it was $100,000 that was given, who knows, was presented by Harry over a Zoom call. Now, explain to me why Harry has now owned taking on presenting to a woman of color this Digital Justice Award for the NAACP, who is founded by people of color. I'm just curious. I think this makes Harry look like a fool because his wife forced him to do this. And this makes Harry look like an apologist. And whether or not they have stepped back from royal duties they are still considered part of the royal family because they're still on the website, guys. And there has been a constant effort by these two to keep riding off the coattails of the royal family. So in a way, this does make it look like the British monarchy is, in a way, giving the reparations to the minorities that so deserve it. Or according to those BLM supporters that Megan is funding, the optics here, in my opinion, do not look so good. And I do think that Harry was set up here. First off, like, where is Megan? She is the proud woman of color. Wouldn't this be an event that she would be so interested in being a part of? Oh, and let's talk about the person that they decided to give this award to, because guess what? This is not because they're doing this out of the kindness of their hearts. There is something in it for them with this connection. So let me share what I found. So Nabia Saeed is the CEO of The Markup. And The Markup is a nonprofit, here we go again, a nonprofit newsroom that investigates how powerful institutions are using technology to change our society. We are a new kind of media organization staffed with an unparalleled roster of quantitative journalists who pursue meaningful data-driven investigations. Unfortunately, anything that touches the Harkles, you know, is tainted with this woke ideology. So when you look into this markup, you will see that all the same players are coming to the table that are pushing this woke agenda. And a big part of this woke agenda in this digital justice is pushing the narrative in trying to take away people's free speech by inviting academics, journalists, policymakers, consumer activists, and community organizers to engage with the findings that they are doing. And the findings are heavily left-leaning. And why is that? It's because of their donors. So when you see these donors who are pumping millions of dollars into these types of organizations, they expect something in return, which is to push the agenda. And what is very interesting here is when you look at this list of donors, you'll notice two particular donors that raise red flags. Omidar Network and Open Society Foundations. So where have we heard about Omidar Network? Well, if you saw my recent video that I did about 
the Archwell new fund that was set up with the Omidar Network, who is tied heavily to the Democratic Party, in which they give lots of money for Democratic political campaigns, such as like campaigns for the Senate. And with Open Society Foundations backed by George Soros, you then see where the agenda is going. Now, this organization totes, oh, they're all about free speech, when in actuality, they're pushing heavily for reforms in the internet space in order to regulate people's freedom of speech. Let's take a look at Nabia Saeed's background as CEO of the Markup. Nabia Saeed is the chief executive officer of the Markup. She oversees the Markup strategy, growth plans, and business operations. Nabia also oversees legal, communications, personnel, and other operational matters. She sounds like a one man show. <laughs> Before joining the markup, Nabia was vice president and associate general counsel at BuzzFeed, the place where Smelly Hall works, the one who attacked and coordinated that campaign with Newsweek and Bot Sentinel to push out that false report. Anyhow, where she counseled on news gathering, libel, and privacy matters worldwide. Under her leadership, the company successfully defended against libel litigation arising out of the publication of the Steele dossier and initiated numerous notable access litigations. Prior to BuzzFeed, Saeed co-founded the nation's first media access law clinic, currently in its 10th year of operation at Yale Law School, and served as the First Amendment Fellow at the New York Times. Wait for it, folks, it gets better. Nabia has been described as one of the best emerging free speech lawyers by Forbes magazine and a real reporter's lawyer by the Reporters Committee for the Freedom of Press, which recognized her with an inaugural award in 2018. So you obviously see that this woman has a purpose for Meghan Markle because she is going through a lawsuit in which her lawyer is really pushing hard on the fact that Megan is entitled to freedom of speech. I wonder, is this now going to be intertwined in Megan's case? Probably a full-on media campaign now with these folks in order to show Megan's defense of her right to freedom of speech. Now, this is just speculation. Why else would they choose her? One thing that I can see here is that Megan definitely paid attention to the Amber Heard trial because it was really the public opinion that really mattered. So she's getting a head start on trying to force the narrative and get people on her side. So when the time comes, if it does come to where she is put in front of a judge and has to tell the truth, or at least try to tell the truth, at which all her lies are going to be exposed and she needs these type of leftist organizations to spin her narrative. And it should worry many journalists in the UK, if you're watching this, please do some work on this. Stop taking our shit and just regurgitating it because your livelihood is going to be affected by the fact that this man Harry, who is in the United States, a prince of the UK, aligning with folks in order to directly impact our civil freedoms of free speech. This is a huge problem. So don't think that because Harry is over here, he's not doing work in order to get the UK shut down. He knows that if the US can push a law that does reform the internet around speech and adjusting on what we can say, what we can think, and what we can do, you better believe the UK will adopt it because these social media platforms and these digital platforms, for the most part, belong to the United States. And this is something that is very important. Everybody understands what we do here in the US because we are leading with this technology and these apps is going to drive what the rest of the world does. So understand that the folks that Harry is aligning with, such as a woman like this, who is very much a freedom of speech advocate and trying to, you know, stop misinformation, blah, 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 is really aligning with these leftist woke ideologists 
such as George Soros, Omidar Network, to push this agenda that has been very destructive and divisive. All because, for whatever sick reason these rich elites and globalists want, is to have more control. And I hate to say it, but anything that touches Meghan and Harry, I will question. And as you can see, once you peel back the onion, you see that a lot of the same people are in bed with one another. And unfortunately, I can't trust this. I can't trust this woman because she's pushing an agenda that is aligning with both Meghan and Harry, who are known to have lied, cheated, manipulated, and hurt others. And that's that. Anybody who chooses to align with these two, I cannot support. To me, it just represents that these organizations are okay with the way that Meghan had treated her father. Or how about these two accelerating the deaths of not only Prince Philip, but also the Queen? Both of those human beings died thinking the world thought they were racist. Neither Meghan nor Harry, with the free speech that they had, chose to correct that situation. And shame on the NAACP for backing these two jokers. They see opportunity, and they're going to exploit it for what it's worth until it's no longer on trend. Honestly, I think that these two need to just shut the F up and go away for a few years. But obviously they're not, so I have to do my job and speak out because they're going to continue to keep trying to exploit and hurt others with what they're doing for their selfish gain. But these are my feelings, and just like Meghan Markle, I should be entitled to feel how I want and be able to express that because of my freedom of speech. My feeling is I don't trust Meghan and Harry. And if there's any journalists that are listening to this, which I know you are, do your job and investigate Archwell Public Charity to find out what fagazi business they got going on there to explain the lack of transparency that is owed to the public because they are a public charity. And while you're at it, find out why Markup News hasn't posted a tax return, even though they were in business since 2020. Leave your thoughts below. As always, I will be back again with some more content. But until then, please be safe, and I'll talk to you later. Bye. That was such a broad. Huh?